Hi there, my name is Brian and I'm an animator. An animator is someone who creates animation. Confused? Okay, let's look at what animation is on Wikipedia. Animation is the process of creating a continuous motion and shape change illusion by means of the rapid display of a sequence of static images that minimally differ from each other. The illusion, as in motion pictures in general, is thought to rely on the five phenomenon. Animators are artists who specialize in creation of animation. Whoa, now we're even more confused. Okay, let's simplify this, shall we? I'm an animator and that means I make things move. So why should you become an animator? Easy, because animators are the coolest people on planet earth. I love to tell stories and over the years I've created short animated films and adverts to help companies tell stories. So whether I'm creating motion graphics or character animation, it all still starts with knowing how and why to make things move or simply put how to animate things properly. Don't worry, it's not that difficult because you already have some experience. You've been making things move all of your life. Anytime you take a cup to drink a cup of water or play football or move your toys around or flip through your books, in a sense, you animate them. No matter what type of animation you need to create, Today, we're going to start at the very beginning and focus on the principles you need to know in order to create great animation. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you the 12 basic principles of animation, first introduced by Ollie Johnston and Frank Thomas, who were pioneer Disney animators. Remember Disney? Those are the guys who made amazing animated films like Lion King, Aladdin, Toy Story, and so many others. These principles were directed more towards character animation but can be used while creating almost any type of animation and help you apply basic physics to your animation making it appear more realistic okay so let's jump right in number one squash and stretch this gives objects a sense of volume weight and character as they move around on the screen number two anticipation Anticipation prepares viewers for an action that is about to happen. For instance, in this animation here, notice how the hand actually goes up before it moves down into the hat to grab the rabbit. In the same way, if you were holding an orange and you wanted to throw it, it wouldn't just fly out of your hand. You would actually lift your hand, take it back behind your head before you hurl it. That action is called anticipation and it helps the viewer to know what you're about to do. Number three, staging. This is the presentation of an idea so that it is completely and unmistakably clear and directs viewers attention to what's important. Number four, straight ahead and post to pose. These are the two main approaches to animation. Straight ahead action works straight ahead from the first drawing to the last drawing of the scene while pose to pose animation relies on the animator planning his action, figuring out what drawings need to be in between to make the animation. The animator does one drawing after another, getting new ideas as he goes along until he reaches the end of his animation or the end of the scene. Number five, follow through and overlapping action. In real life, when things move, nothing stops all at once. When a main body stops, other parts catch up with it before coming to a halt. Let's take for instance, a lady with long hair running. When she's running and she stops, she doesn't just come to a stop altogether, but her hair actually keeps flowing afterwards. Number six, slow in and slow out. This is the way an object accelerates and slows down during its movement. For example, when a pendulum, or in this case, a spider, swings back and forth, it picks up speed on its way down, but it slows down on its way back up again. Number seven, arcs. Most actions follow a slightly circular path when they move. This gives a more natural flow. Number eight, secondary action. This supports the main action to create a more realistic action. 
For example, a person walking down the road might be texting. In this case, the primary action is walking down the road while the secondary action is texting. This just gives some richness to the character. Number nine, timing. Timing helps with the realism and makes objects abide by the laws of physics. Number 10, exaggeration. This imitates reality, but in an extreme way to create a more emotional scene. Number 11, solid drawing. Solid drawing takes into account form of objects in 3D or three dimensional space, giving them volume and weight. Number 12, appeal. This is when something is designed so well that it attracts the eye. It is the way the drawing is, it is the way a thing moves, it is the way it's animated. And all these things put together help the viewer to feel the character is real, even though it's not. So that's it. The 12 principles of animation. Try to observe how things move in real life and see how these principles affect their movement. One of the most important skills for an animator is observation. There's so many tutorials on the internet for you to get started and you can actually start by downloading the free app called Stop Motion Studio onto your iPad, iPhone or similar apps on the Android devices. It's very easy to use and in minutes you can start to create your own stop motion animation which is basically a bunch of photographs stitched together to form a video. I'd really love to see what you can create with this app using one or more of the principles that I've just taught you. So if you'd like to get in touch with me personally, you can reach me at the following email address. Once again, I'm Brian. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.